Hey there, Dirt Road Believers. Welcome to another week of devotion. I am Tina, and if this is your first time joining Dirt Road Believer on YouTube, welcome. This channel is all about the Christian faith, and each Tuesday we dive into the Word of God for deeper truth in our faith, um, for closer connection to God, and just to build strength and endurance in our walk in the Christian faith. So thanks for being with me. I'm so excited about today's devotion because I know I've hit on something when I'm plugging away. I've been plugging away at this devotion for over a month. And then I go to sleep Friday night and I wake up and God is like, this is what you're gonna talk about. So I know when it's not me, it's gonna be so much better. <laughs> so today, moms, women who are busy, who are about to pull your hair out, um, this is for you, okay? It's called Crock-Pot Faith in a Microwave World. And I think I first heard that. I think Jensen Franklin talks about a crockpot God in a microwave world. And so I'd heard that before, um, but God really impressed this upon my heart and led me to just a scripture that I have never, ever looked at this way before. So I'm so excited to get into our devotion today. Um, it's going to have some humor and it's going to have some things that you can totally identify with, moms, starting with okay um i came out to film this devotion today and looked down and beside my foot a fork which has been here quite some time it, i'm surprised the mower hasn't chewed it up and spit it out by now but moms can you not identify i mean come on when i got married this will this is going to date me a little bit when i got married um i got zero instapots i got zero air fryers that's because they hadn't been invented yet okay um i got 10 crock pots 10 crock pots <laughs> and so i do a lot of crock pot cooking so before we get into today's video my favorite crock pot recipe my mama taught me this years ago four ingredients and it's so delicious and we're getting into that season you know it's the last week of september I'm in North Georgia and the air is crisp and cool and it's starting to feel like fall. So if you wanna break out the crock pot and make a good roast, here we go. Put your roast in. Uh, put some dry Lipton onion soup mix on top of that or the off-brand, doesn't matter. And then, here, this is important now, golden mushroom soup. Spread that around on top of your onion stuff and then add whatever vegetables you want. Put that bad boy on low all day and when you get home from work the house is going to be smelling good and put some frozen biscuits in the oven and you got yourself a meal with gravy and everything so uh, you should try that hey recently um i have been looking at this all i don't know for maybe a year but we have this fabulous lady in our community her name is Hamu, and Hamu has this beautiful garden, Hamu's Himalayan Gardens. And we went and checked it out. My mother-in-law and I went and checked it out. And it was so, it's an experience is what it is. You're not just going to buy a plant, like getting to talk to Hamu and hearing her knowledge. Um, she does a lot. She's got sausage. She's got uh, honey that she does herself. She and her husband, um, I bought these lovely earrings she made like she's got it all and she's so much fun to talk to so if you are in the area um she's in menlo hey Moos, himalayan gardens so check out her place and then i will be right back with today's devotion crock pot faith in a microwave world
Okay, let's get into our devotion. Um, I am an elementary teacher. I teach music, so I teach kindergarten through fifth grade, and the progression of hilarity in my job, oh my gosh, it's great. So the other day, this was kind of unexpected, but every day going to my job is unexpected. What, the kid, what are the kids gonna say? We don't know. But we had read a book, and this is a kindergarten class, and in the book, there was a bridge that was out. And what, you know, I stopped the book for critical thinking. What are we going to do? How are we going to get across the bridge? And so they began, you know, they began coming up with these ideas. And uh, this one little girl, patient as she could be. And we had been through, you know, all the logical, uh, you know, ways to get across this bridge that was out. And I finally get to her and I was like, how would you get across the bridge? And she said, I would have my helicopter come pick me up and take me across. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, guys, we live in a microwave world. We are raising children to, well, I'll just do this. I'll just get it right now. And I mean, everything, look at, look at how the marketing, I mean, we think two days is too long to wait. You know, I can randomly think, I need that and what do I do get on my Amazon app and have it in two days and gosh is it ever gonna get here um DoorDash kills me like we can't really wait in the fast food drive-through so DoorDash for that problem um, I mean it just quick books you look at the marketing it's all centered around how fast can I get it and so when we look at the promises of God we know from God's Word that every promise in Jesus Christ is yes and amen, but not right now. It takes a long time to get to the fruition of God's promises. Why? <laughs> Why, God? Why does it take so long? So if you've been walking in the Christian faith for any time at all, you know that the promises of God are not instantaneous. They take a while. So why is God's design to take time? I mean, after all, doesn't the Bible say we're just a breath? We're here today, gone tomorrow. Shouldn't we speed this thing up? And I can answer you in one word, and this is from what God has taught me. It has to do with investment, okay? When there is an investment, which investments take time, then we are learning the eternal lessons that God is trying to teach us. And so many times when it feels like we are just waiting on God forever, you know, I've been praying prayers for eight, 10 years now, and I know that that promise is coming, but I haven't seen it yet. He's maybe given me evidence of it's coming, keep going, but I haven't seen it yet. So. God likes to take the scenic route, and God is more of a crockpot God um, than an instapot God. So the first um, lesson, I guess, or scripture that pops into my mind when it comes to investment is um, Matthew 25, when Jesus tells the parable of the talents, and they're all given, um, you know, money and are left with it. What are they going to do with it? And you remember the guy, he invests it and doubles and so what what happens he's given more to manage and so there's something to this making an investment not necessarily financial investment making an investment and seeing increase seeing reward there being given even more to manage so when you make investments in the things that god puts value in there's always going to be increase and blessing. Eternal promises are going to be fulfilled. So let's look at what something God puts very high value on, which is family, right? Mother Teresa says this, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. That's how God designs this all. It starts within the home. And so if he has made you manager over a home and a family, then there's, if that, that investment that you make there is going to be tied to increase and reward. So we must be investing in our families in a way 
that honors God. Um, you know, the, the beginning of that family is marriage. So we have to invest in our marriage. And I know that for young moms, um, that can be a real challenge. I know for me, when I had young kids, I began to pour everything. All my investments went into my children. And you know, there's kind of this husband over here in my peripheral vision. And I regret that I did not take, um, I did not take that investment seriously as primary when I had young children because we got to a point where, you know, we were in trouble. Like we, we had some, some problems because, um, and I, and I took ownership and I took a lot of the blame for that because, um, you know, he desired me to invest. He, he desired, you know, he was the one kind of going, what just happened? Like I was, I was, you know, important. And then here come these kids. And so, um, I had to turn back to God and say, look, Lord, I have, you know, I, I, am responsible for getting us here so please <laughs> help me and and as good of a god as he is he did let's let's look at this investment in our families and the scripture that god gave me love this passage i know you do too proverbs 31 um, a wife of noble character so turn with me to proverbs 31 and we are going to kind of dissect this and the way we're going to look at it is we're going to look first at we're going to look at a verse and then we're going to look at okay crock pot faith microwave world like let's look at the um dichotomy here and kind of spell it out so we're going to start in proverbs 31 verse 15 so let's read this it says she rises while it is still night and provides food for her household. So a woman with a crockpot kind of faith, this is a woman who day after day, she's providing for her family, she's taking care of the needs, she's on top of the homework, the lunch money, the bedtimes, the curfews, the clothes, the meals, the transportation, um, you know, the emotional support that is needed from her. She is busy. And we're gonna get into work life in just a little bit in these passages, but don't get me wrong. It doesn't matter if you've been called to the workforce, if you are a homeschool mom, stay at home mom, you are rising every morning before it is daylight and you are making those preparations. Um, most likely you are in bed after your children because um, you know that's what it takes day after day. It is not glamorous, okay? It is crock pot. It is slow, it is steady, and at the end, there is something amazing. Now, let's look at the microwave world we live in. Microwave world, kids, you're on your own. Like, you better figure it out. Um, there's little or no expectation for your role as a mom, and, you know, it, there's kind of a lot, way more freedom than kids need as far as their role goes in the family. And microwave, a microwave example of verse 15 is, you know, moms who are late on, you know, getting their kids where they need to be, or, you know, there are tasks that are undone, um, deadlines not met, and, you know, just a sloppy way of, um, a sloppy way of, you know, meeting expectations that are there. It's not consistent. All right, let's go on to verse 15. I'm sorry, that was verse 15. Verse 16 through 18 says, She evaluates a field and buys it. With her earnings, she draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her profits are good and her lamp never goes out at night. All right, let's break this down. Crockpot faith women, consider their spending decisions, okay? And those spending decisions are tied back directly to work, to her hard work. Now, why does that, what does that mean and why is that important? Because <clears throat> they didn't have credit cards in Proverbs, all right? So, spending no more than what you make, that's important. That's setting your family up for the future. That's teaching your children. Um, you cannot spend more than you make. That's gonna get you in trouble. 
but the microwave world that we live in there's very little financial pl planning okay for a microwave mom um she's idle there's no budgeting impulse buying debt okay a crock pot faith filled mom is industrious she's not idle and there is a correlation between my spending my financial habits and my work okay it starts with hard work and then verse 20 i love this <clears throat> verse 20 says her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy now guys this is solomon writing this okay and when the Israelite community, there were there was no home, work, church. It was all the same thing. Okay, um, you know, you you went to church with your community. You went to church with your family, and so um, God's God's um, ideals didn't end with with home. They stretched, and so they stretched over to other things, and so displaying. Um, your excellence in the home, out in the community, outside of the home. It says her hands reach out to the poor. She extends her hands to the needy. And so her, um, her investment, financially, time-wise, they extend beyond the home to the needy. And she's, she's giving an example to her children of excellence outside the home, what it means to take care of those who are in need, not just in your family. And in our world, um, we have a tendency to close our door. This is our little family. This is who I'm going to take care of. This is who I'm going to invest in. And we forget sometimes about that example of showing excellence outside the home and pouring into those um, who need it outside the home. So the microwave version of that verse is closing your door to your house. This is my little nest. This is what I take care of. We spend on ourselves. We invest in ourselves. And there's little consideration for people outside the home who may be in need, who need your time and attention. All right, let's go to verse 21, which says, She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all in her household are doubly clothed. They're clothed because they have people taking care of them. They are clothed because even higher than that, they have a God who is taken care of. This is a woman, this is a crockpot faith-filled woman who is daily praying over her home. She is praying over protection for her home and she is trusting that her home and her children are in God's hands. So she can lay her head down at night without any anxiety and sleep peacefully because God is the protector of her home and her children. That is a crockpot faith-filled woman. Then we have the microwave woman who pays little attention to, you know, provision, protection from God over her family, not really praying, maybe spotty prayers, and she is anxiety ridden. She's constantly worried that something bad is gonna happen within her household to her children. And she's a wreck, okay? She is a wreck because she doesn't have that consistent connection with God and that reassurance, hey, I'm, I can take care of your family better than you can. So trust in me. Um, so being, um, being not anxious over our home, but trusting God for protection and for direction, showing us how to parent, how to provide. All right, let's move on to 24 and 25. She makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She can begin to laugh and she can laugh at the time to come. Um, again, we see this relationship here now with people within her job that she influences and that she is accountable to. Excellence and hard work are evident outside the home in her job, and she is a busy provider. That's the crockpot faith-filled mom. And then microwave world says, put it off, be lazy, um, you know, 
I, I mean, do you really need connections within the workplace? Close your door, work from home. There's no standard of excellence. The bare minimum is, um, you know, what is accepted by the microwave in a microwave world. But guys, we have influence, not only over our families, but in our community, in our churches, in at our workplace. And so the crock pot um, woman realized realizes I'm not just going to show up at work and everybody's going to respect me and you know do do what I say or think I have great input that takes time just like the crock pot showing up every day doing your best work you know pouring into those around you making those investments at work and then that brings us to verse 26 and 27 her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Guys, this is a big one right here. Wisdom is knowing how God thinks about situations. Not, you know, when we see our children straying, not given, you know, what we think. God, give me the words to say. Give me your wisdom. How are you looking at this situation? Um, you know, and talking to our children with the wisdom of God, knowing what our children are up to, having a handle on our, our family. What are we doing? You know, what directions are we going in? What are our gifts? And really having a handle on your children. Knowing their activities, okay? <laughs> um, Life 360 uh, calls, what are you doing? But no, letting them know there's an accountability piece here, okay? We're not just going to do what we want. Now, I've seen microwave parenting too, which is overlook the things. When you come across something that could be problematic, oh, laughing it off. Oh, that's just the kids these days. They're hilarious, you know. Uh, no, I'm sorry. If, if my antenna is, is going off, and my radar is going off that there's problem. I'm not passing it off. Don't pass off what your kids do as other just being kids. That's an opportunity for wisdom and instruction that God wants to give them. Um, I mean, I could start on my kids and, and the things that I see as problematic and they're little things that you might go, well, that's just, that's just a teenager. Okay, yeah, it is just being a teenager, but I'm not raising a teenager, I'm raising an adult. So don't ignore the little things that are opportunities for godly wisdom in your home. Know what your children are doing. Know where they are. Know when they are home. Know when, you know, they come in at night. That is very, very important, and that's outlined right there in verse 26 and 27, which says, don't be idle. Okay, don't go to sleep until your kids get home. <laughs> know what they're doing, know where they are, know who they're with. And then let's go to verse 28. <clears throat> her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Guys, this respect, this praise that is talked about in this verse can only come from crockpot, <laughs> crockpot parenting and living and investing. Um. <clears throat> When you show your family, I'm faithful, I'm there, I'm doing the things that it takes to provide and protect this family, that automatically comes with respect. And I say automatically, automatically over crockpot time cooking. Um, it takes a while. Now, um, when we look at this verse in a microwave world, we might see women being treated as less um, kids popping off, smart Malvin, um, their, their moms. Maybe they don't um, have the respect that they should, but then again, maybe mom's not stepping it up, you know, crockpot style every day. So gaining that respect, it does take a long time and it does take um, discipline and it takes um, patience, but that respect comes with a crockpot faith-filled mom. It just does. All right, let's finish up verse 30 and 31. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. 
give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. Now we see that reward and that praise and that respect coming outside the home too, first in the home and then at the city gates in her community. So crockpot faith-filled women, they are not vain. They are not obsessed with the shallow things, you know, um, they are they are connected to what matters relationships investing in relationships and um, and there's this connection again between labor and reward we see that in the very last verse microwave moms microwave world expecting something for nothing the idea that great families great marriage they just happen uh -uh, honey they are hard work and sometimes even with all that hard work they still don't happen i hope this devotion about crockpot faith in a microwave world has given you fresh eyes on um, proverbs 31. you know this is such a go-to for women i know there even there's even a ministry out there a proverbs 31 um, woman but i hope this has given you fresh eyes on the the time that it takes the investment that it takes to get to those rewards that we and those promises that we really want to see in our lives um, it is a daily grind it there are daily challenges and we need the wisdom of god to deal with those and we need our children and our husbands seeing that you know we're not just pulling something out of dr phil's playbook we this is our playbook right here and we are daily using the wisdom that God has given us as mothers, as family managers, as wives to manage our home and our family day after day after day. And remembering that it doesn't end with the family. We go, we take that same excellence into our community, our church, our workplace. And am I saying I have mastered all of this? No, let me remind you of the fork okay <laughs> this this kind of junk happens every day in our house but i trust that god is using those moments to help me teach my children hey you should really pick up after yourself <laughs> guys i'm just a mom just like you i hope you've enjoyed this devotion i certainly have and i hope that you have an awesome day hey subscribe to dirt Ray believer if you're not already and i know you know a mom out there who needs this today so make sure that you share it with her. And I can't wait to see you again next week for a new month and another exciting direction for this channel. So join me in October. It's been great to be with you today. Have a wonderful day. And until next week, slow down, take the dirt road a week.